Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how I made print then cut ornaments. You guys, I'm in love with these ornaments. I am in love with these ornaments. You don't have to know how to do sublimation. You don't have to have a sublimation printer. You don't even have to know what sublimation is in order to create beautiful photo ornaments this Christmas with the printer that you have. All right, so this is what one of mine looks like. This is just printable sticker paper. And on the back it says, oh, come let us adore him. This is another of them. Look at, this is printable sticker paper, you guys on acrylic ornaments. Look how cute. Oh my goodness. This one says Christmas begins with Christ and there's a picture of my family. I designed them in Canva and I uploaded them to Cricut Design Space for them to be cut out because if I had to cut those circles, it would they wouldn't be circle shapes. All right. <laughs> All right, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button turn on the bell for notifications because i do upload new content every single week without fail you guys i am on the road to 4,000 subscribers i'm right around the corner from 4,000 subscribers and i'm on the road i want you to be on the road with me i don't want you to miss a single moment of my antics all right so without further ado let's look at the materials you will need in order to create beautiful photo ornaments just like these with pictures of your family the materials that I use for this project include, I was connected to my Cricut Explore Air 2, and the printer that I use is not sublimation. It is an old Canon MX470. I used um, my standard grip green Cricut mat. I used acrylic ornament blanks. They come in a package of 20, and they actually come with these, um, you know, I guess the rope to hang the ornaments, but I didn't use these. I just used the ornament blanks. These are three inch ornament blanks. Printable sticker paper. I'm using the Paper Studio brand that I purchased from Hobby Lobby and I paid, I did not pay $9.99 for them. I paid $5.99. This is heavyweight paper, but it's, it's really good. Um, I also use various colors of twine. Now I purchased my twine from Walmart, but I've also purchased twine from Amazon. I'll put a link below to the one from Amazon uh, because I don't have the packaging from the one that I purchased from Walmart. But if you get some from Walmart, it's in the Christmas section. Um, I also use various colors of washi tape. And I just found the thinnest washi tape that I could, I use the thinnest, thinnest washi tape that I could find. So it looks like this and it all came in one package. I also use a design, multiple designs from Design Bundles. All three of these uh, designs right here are from Design Bundles. And I use my Pin Pin weeding tool. So I use, I, I, well, I actually use my red one, but if you don't have one of these, these things are amazing. I don't know if you can see how pointy that is, but it's pretty good. It's amazing. I really like it. And I only use that to take the plastic off of my um, ornament blanks. And I use my True Control Cricut knife. So I use this um, to cut around and clean up the image from the photo. Okay, so without further ado, let's head on over to Canva so I can show you how I designed my photos and my images. And from Canva, when we finish in Canva, we will I will move over to Cricut Design Space. I am on the home page of Canva, just canva.com. I'll click custom size and because I'm uploading photos that I want to use, uh, the typical size of a photo is four by six. I'm just gonna change that to six by four. So the width will be six, the height will be four, and I'm gonna change my measurements to inches, okay? So six by four inches, create new design. Okay, when it comes in, I'll have a blank screen that looks like this. On my computer, the computer that I'm using, it might not look like this on your computer. You have to follow the settings that you have. I can only show you the settings that I have. All right, so there are templates, elements, uploads, text, and then other options over here in the panel to the left. I'm gonna click on elements. I am going to type in Christmas background. I'll type it in even though it's already 
showing up right there. Okay, so Christmas background, it gives me all of these options for Christmas backgrounds, okay? So what I'll do is find one that I like. So let's just say I like, um, I like, um, I like this one, okay? So I clicked on it, it automatically goes onto my blank space over here. I will right click on it, click set image as background. And um, so this is one of the backgrounds that I will use. And what I'm going to do is duplicate this page. So this little box that I'm hovering over right here at the top right of the image, I'm gonna click that. So I know I have a front of my ornament and back. All right, so here I'll go to uploads. I've already uploaded all the images that I'm going to use. On this one, I used this um, this file from Design Bundles. It says, oh, come let us adore him. I like the way this looks. I think the colors look nice with this background and it just, I love it. So it's perfect for me. Now for this, I'm going to upload a picture of my family. Well, I already have it uploaded. I'm going to add it to this background that's already here. Okay, so I am going to go to, let me find the photo that I want to use. It is this one. What I'm going to do, when I clicked on the photo, it automatically adds it to the background. I am going to edit the image and remove the background. Okay, I don't want to have a background. I want it to look like we're standing on this um, wood and, you know, walking in a winter wonderland. All right. And we're actually not. All right. So I think that would make a beautiful ornament. All right. Now I'm going to add a page and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to elements again and just continue to look at the options that I have for backgrounds. And, you know, just taking into consideration the colors that we're wearing because, you know, you want colors that will complement um, your background image. You want it to complement what you're wearing, the colors that you're wearing. So I kind of tried to stay away from certain colors because I wanted it to be, you know, I wanted it to look nice with what we had. Oh, this one would have been really pretty, but I didn't use that one. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let me see. Let me go back. I think I might have passed the one that I am looking for. Let me look for it. Oh, it was this one. Okay. So I'm going to right click on it, set images background, duplicate this because I want to have a front and a back. All right. And on the one side, I'm going to my uploads. On one side, I have the file that says um jesus is the reason for the season i just kind of moved it down and on this um page four of my document i'm going to go back to my uploads and i am going to use the photo where we are wearing our rockets gear because i knew that would complement these these colors very nicely Okay, and I don't want to keep the background there. So I clicked on the photo, click edit image, remove the background. Okay, so I'm, it just looks like we're just standing there. Okay, we're standing with the gifts above our heads. All right. All right. Now I'm going to go to my last two. All right. And I am going to find um, what I was looking for. Let me go to back to elements. I wanted a green Christmas background because we are wearing maroon and the colors did not go very well with red. So what I did was I chose this one and I um, right clicked on it. Okay, and then I duplicated the page. And on this one, I'll go back to my uploads. On the back of it, it says, Christmas begins with Christ. Okay. And I knew these colors will look beautiful together. And I just needed to make sure that, you know, this was scooted over enough so that once I 
you know, cut my ornament and I wouldn't have any part of it cut off. And then in this, on the, the last page, I needed to find a photo um, that would work well with these colors. Okay. I knew red would not be the way to go. All right. And so for this one, I edit image, remove background. Okay. And I just made it a little bit bigger and I actually cut a little bit of it off because I knew that, um, you know, it's going to be on an ornament and I just wanted it to be on there good enough. And that's all I did. And then once I had what I wanted, I can just call it a family ornaments. I can name it whatever I want to name it. Okay. Then I'll download it. And then it's, you know, it's all six pages. Yes. I want to download them. Okay. So I'm going to get them downloaded. And then once I have them downloaded, I will upload them to Cricut Design Space. So they're downloading and I will stop here and then I'll show you what they look like. Um, what, what these images look like once I get them to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and what I'll do now is start to upload the photos that I downloaded from Canva. So I'll go to upload. Okay. And so this was one of them. There are, should be a total of six. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and there should be one more. Where is my one more? Right there. All right. I'm going to add them to my canvas. They are going to come in big and they're going to come in attached and that's okay. Okay. Now I will resize the view on my canvas and I will separate these pictures just by clicking on them, you know, one by one. Okay. Look how cute and pretty and pretty and cute. Okay. So I will just put the images that match next to each other. Then I will grab a circle. I'm loving the new options with the Cricut Design Space. Okay. And it doesn't matter what size circle I grab. The only thing that matters is that I am able to um, make the circle big enough to cover everybody in the photo and, you know, get a good clean cut. All right. So there I go. I just made the circle big and I am going to make sure that everybody is covered. You know, it doesn't matter if our feet are cut off because I don't care about that, but I do want to make sure some of the, the ornaments and the presents at the top are included. So I'll click over that, select both and just slice it. Okay. So now I have one ornament. I can delete this and I can just use the same and move this stuff over. Use the same circle multiple times. Okay. I just want to make sure that everything is covered. All right. Then I'll just select over both and I will slice it. Slice it and dice it. Look at how cute that is. Okay. I can delete this. And I just keep going until I have all of my images sliced and diced. Okay. Slice. Look at how cute. I can delete that. Okay. Same. Same. And bring that down a little bit. And I with this one, I kind of made sure to scoot it over because I wanted to make sure I had some of this, these decorations in there. Um, hold on. Okay. Um, select over both slice. Okay. Look at how cute, look at how cute. And you don't need to be, you know, doing sublimation for this. I am loving this already. Okay. Select over both slice, delete that. And then I will do the same thing with this. Okay, making sure that everything is in there. All right. And then slice. Slice is absolutely my favorite 
feature within Cricut Design Space. Okay, so now once I've done all of that, I have my three ornaments, I can look at these triangles and see that Cricut Design Space is having a hissy fit, all right? But you don't have to Cricut Design Space because I am going to resize them. The next thing I'm going to do is grab a square and resize it. I'm going to unlock it and the width, I'm going to change it to 6.75 um, and the height is going to be 9.25, okay? And I'm going to change this rectangle to pin, okay? Because I want to be able to see it. Then I will resize each one of these ornaments to three inches. So I'm going to click on the first one. I'm going to resize it to 3.0 and I'm just gonna drag it down in here, okay? The goal is to be able to print from one sheet of paper, not two, okay? So I'm gonna resize this one to 3.0, drag it down in here, okay? Same thing, resize 3.0, drag it in there. Okay, so this, 6.75 by 9.25, this represents the biggest space that Cricut Design Space will allow for us to do print then cut. And you know, sometimes you have to trick the machine into making, letting you do what you want to do because they only want to do what they want to do. It's not a fair relationship. Okay, all right. So you might have to move it around a little bit and that's why calibration is important too. You know, it's important to have your machine calibrated so that you you know get good cuts and you don't mess up anything all right let me make sure i want to just i want to move that okay see it's cut off a little bit i don't know if you can see that but i also need to make sure that i'm not Um, getting too close to another ornament because I don't want them to cut on top of one another. All right. And then this one, I'll just resize as a 3.0 and then move it down in there. Okay. And so, yes. Yes, 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 and yes. Yes, yes. Yes, let me just move that all the way to the back. I want it to be behind everything. Okay. Um, okay, so it looks like I can do it. All right, so now I'm just gonna hide this for one second and try to attach these. Perfect. So I know that I could cut these if I wanted to, all right? So the goal is to be able to cut from one sheet. Now mine is not gonna be in this exact order because I'm recording the video out of order, but you get the drift. All right, so I can click make it and then I can send this to my printer. So I'm gonna click continue and then um, send to printer. I keep the add bleed option on. If you don't want to do that, then don't do it. When I click use system dialog and then I click print, my printer options will pop up. I'm not sure about how yours will look because I can only speak from how mine will look. But typically when you click use system dialog, your printer options are behind here somewhere. They will pop up but you have to click that in order to see your printer options. Okay, so once I click print, my paper is not just going to print. I'm going to get some options for my printer, okay? So I'm not using my sublimation printer. I'm just using my regular um, inkjet. I don't even think it's an inkjet. I think it's a desk jet. It's old, it's an old printer, okay? So I'll click my preferences. My preferences might not match yours because you know, you have a different device and a different, you know, printer. Okay, I don't change anything up here at the top. I do change my media type photo papers. I'm using, um, this is a matte, it's a matte photo paper and I want the print quality to be high, okay? And then I'll click okay. 
and then I would have to click print again in order for them to print. But I don't want them to print because I already have mine printed. All right, everything I'll do from here will be back on um, on the camera. When I finish, let me show you this though. So let's just say I already have my paper printed out. I'll click browse all materials and I will choose card stock for intricate cuts. That's the cut setting that I love the most. Um, it does go around the design twice, but you will get a good clean cut. All right, now I'm going back to the camera. Now that I have my images cut out on this, this package that I purchased, it says there are protective films on both sides of, of this board. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell that it's a clear plastic on top. And so, you know, you'll get your image put on there and you're like, it doesn't look right, it looks fuzzy. And it's because that plastic is still on there. I'm just gonna use my pen pen weeding tool to take the plastic off of one side. Okay. And, This paper is thick, which I love. I love. I love. Look at my sticker. Look at how cute.
I have some pieces of twine cut. I'm gonna just use three different colors. Um, the khaki and white, the red and white, and just regular, the regular color. I also have these um, washi tape, these thin rolls of washi tape. And what I've decided to do around this, ed, this uh, top piece right here is just add some washi tape to that will coordinate with the color that is already there because that's just plain i guess that's marker um that's just plain and i wanted to kind of jazz that up a little bit so i am going to just get some washi tape and go around it a few times and the beauty of it is i don't have to glue i don't have to paint i don't have to do any of it i can just go around it you know one or two times just to cover that up now you don't have to do this this is totally optional it's totally you know your choice on how you want to decorate yours i'm just giving you options and i think this brings out the color in the the colors that are already in the ornament i, I like it i think it's so pretty Okay, so hopefully you were able to follow along with my process and you are able to achieve beautiful ornaments print with print and cut just like these. I'm very, very pleased with how they came out. I love both sides of them. I just used an SVG that I purchased from Design Bundles on one side and I used our regular family photos on the other side. I um, uploaded the photos to Canva to change the background on them and I just put them together with you know, printable sticker paper. I love the way these came out. I think they're my favorite ornament so far. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. Let me go ahead and say this. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. Turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.